What is up, YouTube? That's it here today. I'm super excited to be back playing more Pokemon VGC 2023 content made exclusively for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Today, we have a really, really cool Patreon submitted rental team that features Armor Rouge, it features Dashbun, it features Back Caliber, it features Abomasnow. This is a really, really solid team. I like it a lot. We've seen a lot of these little cores, these little micro cores, uh, in a bunch of videos on YouTube. I know a lot of people have seen like Abomasnow Back's Caliber, uh, they've seen the Armor Rouge Indity, they've seen the Armor Rouge Dashbun, but I think this team actually brings it all together. There's already a lot of good stuff going on with this team. I would say almost all of these moves are perfect. Almost all of the item choices are perfect. All of the terror choices are almost perfect. And all of the EVs are actually really, really good. We're going to take a look at the submission that this person actually... This is Carlos... Uh, I'm going to mess up the name. Carlos uh, pa Pacheco? Carlos Pacheco, um, they're big fan, making their first submission, the team fixing, got some mons from the other YouTube videos that I liked, which is kind of like what I said, um, it's just a mixture of a bunch of things we've seen on YouTube, and they basically, like, ex described each mon's role in the team, I really like their, uh, in-depth description of Scizor here, I think it's really, really cool, there's a deliberate reason why they're using a Scizor, it solves an obviously bad matchup in Sand, and these are the sort of, like, proactive thinkings we want to cultivate with these sort of team thinkings. I want you guys to realize there's a reason for using every single mod on the team, and I really like what Carlos did here. We can take a quick look at the Eevees and see, like, all of the Eevees on these mods are actually put into specific spots. I would have liked to have known exactly what these are living, but these are okay. I think this is good. This is still good. This can be optimized. This can be optimized. This can be optimized, but you can see that they're in the right idea. I really like that a lot of these mons have unique Terra options as well to be able to potentially play around things like, uh, you know, prankster taunts or, you know, super effective moves like for the dash mon, on example. Um, it's steel Terra type, so uh, we can use our well-baked body to still block fire attacks, but we don't have to be afraid of other steel attacks in this situation. Very, very good proactive thinking. That's what I really like about this team. As for the team's defensive typing, it does need a little bit of work. There's huge weaknesses to rock, but that's where the Scizor comes in. It's so smart. Uh, also, like, Steel Weakness, that's where the Steel Terra on the Dash Bun comes in to be able to give us a little bit more damage mitigation in that situation. So, hopefully, by using this team, we'll be able to find just a few more ways to optimize it. This is definitely already a Master Ball level team, but uh, I think we can definitely take it to the next level by changing just a few things. But I'm very excited to use this team before we get into it. Don't forget to answer the question of the day. Let me know, are you excited to watch San Diego Regionals? The regional coming to San Diego. This is going to be live streamed on the Pokemon's Twitch channel, I believe. Um, I believe. Let me know if you've ever actually watched regionals before, if this is your first event, or uh, if you're a longtime viewer and excited to see us start a new season. And uh, without further ado, let's just hop right into it and go get some wins. Wish me luck. Here we go. Rain matchup. Two Swift Swim users and a Magnezone. Magnezone is so cool. I bet it's going to be firing off huge 100% accuracy thunders. I really, really like that. We're going to have to save our Abomastone in the back and pivot out. I think that's probably what we're going to be wanting to do here. Bax Caliber is a pretty good Mon in some situations versus Rain. We also have the Ground Terra on Bax Caliber, so we can block like one Rock Slide from that um, Dreadnought if we have to. So what I think we're going to do, I wish we I wish we had a good Pivot Mon. Does this Scissor actually have U-Turn? Are they the best player ever? They are. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, so we're going to want to leave with something with Protect. Probably something like Scizor and uh Bax caliber pop the protect with the dragon zord to go for like either a tailwind or a U-turn. you can already see like i said this team's made very very well already bringing that obama snow and then i don't really know what we want to do here i don't think we're gonna need this because there's so many mon I, I guess that there's three monster weak to fire so like i guess we can just bring this At armor cannon's neutral against dreadnought too we can always expanding force or energy ball yeah this is so good. Like, I love this team. I love teams like this. A bunch of little micro cores all working together. We're going to take a look real quick at some of the EVs while we're waiting for the menus. But you can see the Scizor can go for bullet punches, tailwinds, U-turns. I wish the Scizor had Protect. I don't know necessarily if I would like the Terra Blast, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, the Bass Caliber is obviously going to be going for Protects. Maybe in a Dragon Dance if they don't want to re reveal their weather. The way to win these Weather Wars is to actually, like, force your opponent to reveal their weather first and then punish them for revealing their weather by bringing in yours reactivating the weather and you know giving yourself a board advantage so think, do we see pelipper we don't so that means pelipper has to be in the back and they're actually doing something really really smart here they're leading with amoongus and amoongus is gonna be the slowest pokemon out of all the pokemon here so that means if i were to switch out and they were to switch out they'd be switching last which means if i switched in my bombs to like a hard switch they would be able to uh switch in their pelipper and then i'd activate hail and then they'd activate their rain uh, all switches are based off that those sort of speed tiers let's see um 
We don't really have that much we can do. That's Dreadnought over there, right? I actually think we're just going to U-turn into this slot. And I'm just going to pop a Protect. I think that a Protect is probably going to play. I could also just hard switch out Scizor for something. But I know they're going to be switching. And so U-turn is an even better play. Because we know that they're going to be switching. So what we're going to do is we're going to be punishing that with an actual hard cast of a switch, which is a U-turn. All we got to do is not get flinched by Rock Slide. All we gotta do is not get punched by Rockside, and this should be, this should be pretty clean. Rockside, don't don't punch my scissor. Correct. We should should we use should we be using Covert Cloak scissor? Survey says. I actually think there's nothing wrong with Covert Cloak scissor, by the way. And you turn. Oh my gosh! I really thought that this whole video was just gonna get like destroyed by RNG, but you know that's good. That's good. So we that's a twofold like wins up there. So in this situation, we bring in our Bomb of Snow. And we can go for an Icicle Spear. We should be able to kill the Pelipper, I think. I think. Icicle Spear kills Pelipper, and Energy Ball definitely kills the Obama Snow. So the question is... Or Giga Drain, sorry, right play. They could Terra here, I guess. But I think we're going to Terra here as well on our backs to make it so we're taking reduced damage from the... Uh, we're going to be taking reduced damage from a Rock Slide. If something like weird happens, like if they go Terra steal or some weird something weird you know um we just don't we don't want to get killed by a rock slide and we want to kill i don't know if we can kill this pelipper but i think that we can all right so they're pivoting out their pelipper and if they're switching in amoongus this is just gonna get the ko easy peasy they might be fodder in the amoongus and then re-bringing out um yeah we can actually still super play around this in my opinion they're, they have to be protecting their dreadnought this turn and even if they want to do all that Again, if we get a free KO on Amoongus, we force them to protect. We still have protect. We still have sashes up on our Abomasnow, so we can just protect Vax Calibur again. Heart switches in the Scizor, reaping this out. They are, they're the ones that are losing them on first, so we're in a great situation here. Protect, absolutely fine. Like, I wish we would have just gotten a KO, but beggars can't be choosers. They're probably going to be getting a Tailwind off here as well. We should be able to get the KO here, because remember, we have the Loaded Dice. Loaded Dice is a really... Oh, it's Citrus? Good, good choice here. Loaded dice says, loaded dice says, the holders moves it two to five times, hit four to five times. So we still want to hit the five, but actually, if we don't hit the five, like if we, if we don't get the KO here, is that, okay, we get the five. Okay, that was like, that could have been good or bad. But let's see what we actually want to get done. They're going to go rock slide, or are they? That's the thing, because we should be outspeeding their Pelipper. Um, Vax Caliber has a, only 180 points with nature, um, so it's, Actually, that, that EV spread needs to be optimized if we take a look at our EV spread right here. Uh, there's no real reason to be like this nature, I think, unless you need to hit this exact number, but you can probably just get the same number here by going like a 252. You, you actually can't be that fast, but uh, we'll, we'll see what we need to do. We need to we need to change some of the stuff on these EVs, though. Yeah, I'm sure they sent Pelibra out, right? Okay, so we need to pivot out the Obama Snow. And or do we, though? That's the thing, is like... We could just go for that Giga Drain. Obama Snow does not outspeed Pelipper, but we are timid. So, like, we can try and outspeed. I think it's worth the shot. I think it's definitely worth the shot there to go for the Giga Drain. And I don't know if I want to protect with my Max Caliber here. It's very, very standard. I'll do it. I'll protect. I think this is just a little bit safe. Because, like, if they just open up with, like, a Liquidate or something, we just lose. And the cool thing, like I said about this ground Terra, ah, all right, so they're going to go, they're probably like Terra Steel or something like defensive. Yeah, like it's some, it's always something weird. Grass, the same thing basically. So they should be definitely nuking my Obama Snow here. Grass Terra, very, very unique choice on uh, this guy. But that also makes it so it's still taking neutral damage from Bullet Punch, which we have since on the back for. So we're okay. As long as we can get some damage in here, we're good. And I'm really, really happy to see no Rock Slide. I do not mind a Hurricane that much. Um, I'd rather just not get, uh, and they are faster than us. So they are full speed, uh, timid Pelipper. And they actually don't even get to see our Sash. Ooh, but they get a confusion hit. That's very, very bad. That's really not great. That's very, very unfortunate. Need to hit. Okay. We actually need to do that just to make it so we can put them within range for like a Life Orb Tick Scizor. So they're going to be liquidating. And we definitely have to switch out the Obama Snow. I'm very surprised that they didn't go for, um, I'm very, very surprised that they didn't go for a Tailwind. There was like basically a free Tailwind. We're going to switch in the Armor Rouge. It's basically useless. I think that Bax Calibur just doesn't have the speed to work in this situation. Because the Drift Bloom's going to, it's not Drift Bloom, the, uh, the Dreadnought's probably full speed, which means they just outspeed us anyways. I guess in that situation, it's better to double protect. 
and then we repin with like a bomb of snow. We'd have to no a bomb of snow doesn't outspeed. Oh, that's very bad. You know, let's try this. Let's try the double switch. See if we can get something to work here. Scizor might not get KO'd. I wish that Scizor had like maybe lefties. That's how I like playing Scizor. <clears throat> I know we're using leftovers on Dash Bum though. This is a hard situation to be in. Hard situation. And it's really, really oppressive having the Pelipper be just a little bit faster. The Confuse is making so we can't weave and protect, so do something weird there. We're going to be foddering a Mon here and then trying to repin with Weather. So even if we lose both our Mons here, we can then still bring out um, the rest of the good Mons. They're going to take a Life Orb Chick uh, there. And that puts them within range for a lot of our other stuff. Another problem here is that... Okay, let's see. We're just going to send a Bomb Snow. They shouldn't get the KO. No Confuse, please. Oh my gosh, why? Ugh. We're going to have to play through it. We're going to have to just play through it. So what we're going to do here is... Do we actually just go for Lava Plume? Like all their mons, they could still have the Float Soul in the back, but I think they would have sent Float Soul out. I think it's either Mouse Grot or Magnezone. So I'm going to Lava Plume here. And I'm going to hard switch in my Bax Caliber. And remember, we have thermal exchange, so we should be fine. We can't be burned. We're going to take about 30%, I think. So show me Pelipper switching. Okay, cool. So half your mons take fire damage. And remember, we're saving our bomb to repin a little bit later. Folks, so unfortunate, but if we get the burn here, that'd be great. It's the only one that didn't take uh, super effective fire damage. But we've seen all their mons. There's the facts. Yeah, again, if we burn that float, so we can get some good plays here. We know that they have that there, but what we can do next turn is we can just switch back in the Obama Snow, you know? We have to also play through the Confuse. That's so unfortunate. <laughs> Never, ever, ever, ever lucky, bro. Uh, okay. Let's think about this. Armor cannon, this thing. I put that thing sash back there. We're gonna try and catch uh, them switching out. Ah, they're not switching. Oh, that's really unfortunate. They're not switching. It's so unfortunate. They're gonna lose us the game. I thought they'd try and like switch in to reactivate Swift Swim on one of their mons, but that confused. Oh, they were. Oh, so Bax is faster than Dreadnought, and we know that now. I thought they were faster than us the whole time. So they get their weather here and we lose. All because we got confused. Never ever lucky. That's so unfortunate. I mean, that's still a good play with the Aqua Jet, but... Ugh. Nothing we can really do about that. Hmm... If I can summon now, they just won't let me get it. They won't let me get it. We have to go for a protect here and then like a Giga Drain. And that's like our only out, but they outspeed with Hurricane. Like, ah, uh, I can't believe that went like that. That's so unfortunate. If they nuke back Calibre or do something weird, like we can win, but like they're just gonna opposite that thing. Yep. Oh, that's so frustrating. That confusion hit completely ruined the game. It completely, completely ruined the game. We got confused by two mons and had to basically you can't afford taking that much of a tempo drop in like a weather mirror like you you really not mirror but like a weather war you you cannot afford to take that level of like i had to switch the bomb was not because it was in the range of getting hitting itself and confusioning okoing itself and then like i had to stay in and risk it and i got punished so unlucky unlucky me at this point like realistically we've already shown a lot of our moves so there's no reason to like show that we actually have anything we just soak the damage we, it, realistically, the right player there would have been just run, but we want to see if the Pelipper has like a pinch berry by chance, because like this is what it would show. We already saw Citrus on their Amoongus, but this would show if they have like a pinch berry. And we only got four Never Lucky, and it looks like no pinch, and then we just get O code. So unlucky first game, but uh, 
that's how it do be. Like, I think Rain is like really, really good. And the double Swift Swim Core is very, very oppressive versus a team built around like Armor Rouge and Vax Caliber. I, I don't know that much of what else, else I could have done. Um, I think the pivot in of Abomas, now that one turn to catch them going for, like switching in one of their mons, you know, we uh, we couldn't really have done that much more. Uh, we tried our best. Okay, Grimmsnarl's really, really good. We can actually use Doshbun here. So I think there's nothing really wrong with opening up like an Indity Weed realistically. Um, I think there's nothing wrong with opening up an Indity Weed versus those big Prankster mons just to get them off your back. I don't think there's a problem with going like Indity... You would open up NDD, Armor Rouge, and Doshbun. So what you were doing is pivoting out your NDD on the first turn immediately for Doshbun. I really would like that. And then, like, realistically, Scizor could be okay at revenge killing things like Grim, uh, doing damage to things like Dragonite. I also think there's nothing really wrong with just using Obama Snow here. And I'm looking at it just a little bit more. Like, this is where I think, like, a Ghost Terra Obama Snow would be really, really good just to block that population bomb, but... I'm trying to think if we even want a bomb snow. We don't deal hail damage with chip anymore. So it's like, I'm trying to see the value in it versus something like uh, Bax Caliber can still be very, very useful after a Dragon Dance if I would ever be able to get it off. I don't know if I'd ever be allowed to get it off. I'll bring the Bax Caliber. Yes, we can get Intimidated, but I think by the Arcanine, but I think this might be the right play. They can't burn it with Will-O-Wisp as well. So it's a good switch in from Rotom. I have no idea what's going to happen here. Like, I think I think we can be okay here, though. I think we can be okay. I'm definitely more optimistic about this game. So, um... Rotom, Arcanine, and Grim, super, super solid. Like, every single time, like, a new format starts and those Pokemon are all legal, you're always going to see those things rise to the top of the ladder just because, like, they're so safe. The cool thing about this for them is, like, I don't know what type of Annihilate they have. And Annihilate does outspeed our Armorage set. But we have follow me so we're just gonna go follow me and expanding force absolutely amazing like i love the follow me expanding force potential here yes we would have liked to switch in the dash bun but like i don't think that that's necessarily like it doesn't have to happen here so we follow me to stop the um final gambit and the expanding force and so like i said they're faster than we are so what they're gonna do is their final gambit will go into the entity and then i'm gonna actually deal single target damage to arcanine and i'm not gonna lie i might be able to just oko it so that would be great um, and the one that we actually target does matter in case they had some move like Ice Spinner or a way to switch in their terrain. We're going to just target the Arcanine, um, but it should be hitting both. But normally the ones that you target do matter. So they are terrorizing. Are, are you dark? I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> Bro, I'll be so furious. It's fire. Cool. Terra, fire, annihilate. Good, good Terra. We've used that in a couple videos. It's a good Terra type. Um, they're just basically doing this to make it so they don't uh, lose. They don't get O-Code by uh, Expanding Force, right? And so we're gonna see how much damage here. I, I think that they're gonna snarl, right? I'm really happy to actually do this damage first. Big damage on that Arcanine. Let's see if we see Citrus. There's the snarl, and it hits our Cobra Berry. Not gonna be that important. Um, it's gonna make our, uh, what is it, armor just a little bit weaker. And let's see what they use here. Bulk up? Yeah, there it is. Cool. Bulk up super, super standard. I wanna see if they have lefties on that guy. We actually can still KO the Arcanine, I think. Um, it's not Citrus Arcanine. I wonder what item it is. Maybe it's a pinch. It'd be really lame to not get that KO. I'm just going to tell you right now. Um, they're not going to go for a ghost type attack into it. They might go for a fire type attack into it. And I'll actually just come in and take the boost. Yeah. If Indy had Helping Hand, this is where I would have used Helping Hand. Just throwing that out there. I'll throw a more Expanding Force. I wouldn't be surprised to see Annihilate Protect. Withdraw Arcanine. Save that Intimidate for a little bit later. And remember, we already talked a lot about like the order in which Speed Tears work, so they have to switch in that slot. It doesn't matter that I targeted the Arcanine slot. This Expanding Force is going to still hit the Annihilate. So Dosh one swaps in here. Let's see if they're going for a Fire Attack. They might just be going for like a Fighting Attack too, which we... Oh, they don't do anything. Cool, I can just Charm that thing. And I'm probably going to pivot out my Armor Rouge. So I'll just Charm the Annihilate. And pivot out to probably Indity. So we still hit the Annihil- Or the Annihil protected, so we're fine. Let's think about what we need to do. So these two, plus Arcanine. I would say the last one has to be like- a, It's not going to be Mousehold, probably. It's probably going to be either Rotom or Dragonite. I think it's going to be Dragonite. So we just have to keep that in the back of our minds. Snarl's okay. Body press is okay. We're just going to go for the Charm. I think the Charm is the right play in this situation. Pivot back into that Indity. 
Yep, we can definitely save that guy for later. Like, that guy just does a ton of damage. We can one-shot so many things with armor cannon. And you save it. They're probably going to put up screens and things like that. We can just chill. Yep, absolutely fine chill in here. Charm. We are faster than them. So we're in a good spot here. I think we're in a good spot. And they might have Defiant, but, like, we'll see. Oh, they are Defiant. You may be thinking, like, that's a, why are you talking about Charm? Why are you talking about Charm? A lot of Annihilates right now are Vital Spirit. Like, a lot of Annihilates are Vital Spirit. I would say most Annihilates right now actually are Vital Spirit. So I'm actually really surprised to see that they they were not. <laughs> so that sucks. That's really, really bad. That's, like, really, really, really shit for me. Um, but it is what it is. There's nothing I can really do about it at this point. Um, let's think about what we need to do. I guess we would just go for a body press into that slot then. And... We don't really need to do anything specific here. We can follow me and get, like, set up for Armor Rouge to come in. There's no reason I'm really Hyper Voice either. Nah, it's still Hyper Voice. They're going to have to get it off the board eventually. And if they go up straight after the Dosh Bun, these, uh, what is it? The, we can bring in something else. I'm very surprised that it doesn't have Vital Spirit. Like, so many are Vital Spirit right now. That's ridiculous. Actually, I, I want to check the, um, usage stats on Annihilate and see. Because, like, I'm sure the usage stats on Picolytic still say... It doesn't, there's no data on it yet. I'm sure that they'd probably skew more towards Defiant just because it is a thing, but... Uh, anyways. Hyper Voice deal basically nothing. Mitigates, I think they Drain Punched me, right? Yes, yeah, so we're just going to chill. We're going to wait up these screens a little bit. Not that much we can realistically do, though. We're going to do this so we can then re-swap and send out and get a new terrain boost. Let's think about what they want to do, though. Um, that Grim is problematic, but I don't think that Grim can actually do anything right now. I think that Grim is like Thunder Wave dual screens, maybe like Scary Phase or something. It might have Spirit Break or something like that. We'll see. If we switch it on Spirit Break, that sucks. Doesn't do like anything at all. Rage Fist, yeah. Good damage. They found going to go for the Dosh Bun. Big damage. Like, we're definitely one shot of there. That's absolutely fine. We need to bring in something that can just get that guy off the board. Spirit Breaking that slot. Very unfortunate. Wow, super unfortunate because we needed that damage. I guess we can still crit, but, like, uh, very, very not great. I, th I think we're going to have to Terra Ground it. Yeah, so we're going to send out Bax Caliber, go for the Terra Ground play. And, um, I guess we could protect Bax Caliber, go for, like, a Dragon Dance. There's no point in that. Like, realistically, our best play is to just go all in on Terra Blast here. I'm still super surprised that that Annihilate was Defiant. Like, everyone's like, that's a, they're all Defiant, but it's like, no, like, uh, they're not. Like, the, the higher level players are, are using Vital Spirit. Let me just uh, check out something. For those of you guys that don't know how it works. So, like, the only thing that checks, like, Annihilate, in my opinion, in these formats is... I'll wait till the end of the turn. Annihilate gets big walled by Amoongus. I guess Terrifier Annihilate wouldn't get as walled, but let's see if they want to go for Thunder Wave. They should have just switched to Arcanine, to be completely, completely honest. They're, that's me, Tarasa. So I guess I have time to do this. Um, like, yes, Defiant is really good. Yes, Inner Focus can be good, right? But, like, Vital Spirit is the really, really solid one right now because it makes so you are, like, you can stay in on Yawns. And Yawn cycles on this guy are, like, so, so, so good. They protect it with the Annihilate. They're actually waiting me out. Are you actually over a Spirit Break into my back, Excalibur? That's crazy. Parting Shot. Yeah, uh, we got Psychic Terrain now. Now we can go Redirection and Dragon Dance, actually. There's nothing really wrong with that. Because we're just trying to wait out screens and do stuff like that. Like, I'm, I'll get the Dragon Dance off. If you want to play... if you That was a misplay, in my opinion. They wanted the Leftovers ticks, but, like, at this point, we just are, like, trying to wait out their screens. Which they only have... Well, we don't know if, what, if they're Light Clay or not, but I'm assuming that they're Light Clay. I'll Dragon Dance here. Dragon Dance, follow me. So let's get the Dragon Dance up. You can totally pivot in that Arcanine. Like, absolutely, totally, positively pivot in that Arcanine. But, uh, 
This Bax Caliber, though, might be able to deal a lot of damage. I can't believe they're not pivoting it in. They're going to kill with Annihilate, unless they're using, like, Rage Fist. We're already faster, but we already do that. So let's see what they're going to do. Spirit Break wouldn't do anything. Rage Fist, oh, the normal type. Awesome. Spirit Break into any of these. Not going to get that much damage. Yeah, we're still fine. Cool. That's a Dragon Dance. We do be taking those. Do we Dragon Dance again is the question. That's a that's a good question, right? Because I'm looking at it here. All right, so the, they are they are light clay. So we have to wait four more turns. In we're going to have to crit this guy. I think we're going to have to crit it in the first place. So, like, we might as well just open up with a Terra... Oh, not Terra Blast, that. <laughs> we might as well just go for it. They're just going to protect. This is a bad play. Okay. Rewarded. <laughs> Rewarded for greedy play. Because you want to get the entity off the board, but I also want to use... My armor rouge. Like, I want to come out and just click the damaging moves. I know you have a bulk up off, and I know that, like, you have a reflect off, but I don't actually know if your Annihilate can eat all this damage. And you're probably going to be pivoting in Arcanine this turn and getting Intimidate. So, like, I'm actually going to click the Expanding Force. Expanding Force plus... Terra ground into that Annihilate might get the KO. I, I could see us doing about 20 to 30% with the Expanding Force, and then, like, I hope Terra Blast can finish it off. It's the best play that I have. It's the absolute best play that I have in this situation. I think there's the last turn. Two turns of Psychic Terrain. Two turns of Light Screens. Three turns of Reflex. Like, this is just our best shot, so... Right there. And this would finish off the Arcanine, too, which is why we want to do it. Like, if you think... That you want that Intimidate so bad. They don't know if we're clear on it yet, but like... I still think the right play is pivot out Grim for Arcanine and try and soak the damage. So I'd only be at plus one. Cool. So this is going to be able to finish off the Arcanine. Arcanine Dunzo. Great. So Arcanine does get the Intimidate up. I mean, we still, I think, need to crit. I still think that we need to crit. But let's see how much damage we get. Come on! Oh, we got it. Boys and girls, children of all ages, play to your outs. Sometimes you'll get them. Why are you looking? You looking, buddy? <whistles> Dang, dude! <laughs> Holy moly. So you could have... We know you have Grim, right? And then we know you have either Dragonite, Mousehold, or Rotom. Mousehold. Awesome. So we just Icicle Spirit. We win. Probably. Probably the win. We target this slot. I'm not afraid of the Grim Star at all. If Mousehold does protect, it does protect. We need Mousehold off the board first. There's no reason to go for the Grim in this spot, I don't think. Because, like, Population Bomb would still lose us the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so we did the right play. So we're going to get that guy off the board. And we nuked it, too. We doubled into it just in case we only got the four hit. That's right, yo. We did it. Let's see what the Grim has. This is Grim. This is your last shot, Grim. I remember we're locked into Expanding Force. You got Foul Play? Does that even do anything? Spirit break into armorage. Dude, that's not even it. Oh, and the, oh, she hit the right target. We should hit the right target. Dude, we're going to take those wins, though. <laughs> Light screen wears off. That's fine with me. We're just dissipating. So you can, go for, you can go for as many things as you want, but like realistically, I think like Icicle Spear is just a good play here. And we have to expanding. This doesn't really matter. Dude, we take those wins all the way to the bank. The crit! 
Yo, we played so patiently, played to our outs, set up a board that let us deal the maximum amount of damage, and completely flipped that game on its head. Like I said, I really think this team is good. We didn't really get to use Dash One that much. We didn't really get to use Dash One that much, but when we did use it, um, I'm still frustrated. Like, it totally should have been Bottle Spirit. It's my fault. I I, I could have played that more patiently. Like, I activated the Annihilate, and so I guess it's my fault, but yeah, let me know in the comments if you, if you, what, let me know in the comments what ability you think Annihilate should have commonly at the higher level. I think definitely uh, people are leaning more towards Vital Spirit. But yeah, I like the way this team plays. Um, I think it's very, very fun to play. And because it's so fun to play, I'm going to play one more. But just that we're going to go into the team building section. Now we're going to play one more game with this team. And then we're going to go into the team building section. Oh, that's that trick room, trick room. We have like well-baked body and flash fire. And they're going to try and roll us with a... Uh, like Bisharp? Oh, dude, I don't know about that one, Chief. All right, let's think about this. I think Indity's great. You just imprison the Trick Room. I think I can just go Indity and um, this guy. I'm going to still bring the Well-Baked Body Bro. And I think in this situation, let me think about this realistically. Scizor is probably the best bet because it can tear a water and fire off like bullet punches if need be. If there's some, for some reason something happens to our terrain. We can bullet punch the Indy, the uh, Lily Gant. We can check the Sylveon. So I think this is probably the best play. I wish this were Protect. I wish this were Protect on this team. But we definitely don't need the Obama Snow. And uh, let's see what they want to get done. I'm very confident about this. I feel Trick Room's really, really good. But you can't just have like the six Trick Room Mon Squad. You need to have like, you know, how I've been using it. You have like a little bit of Tailwind and then like Trick Room with like a good setter and like maybe one Mon that like really, really works in the Trick Room that they have to respect both options. Like, if I just have to stop your Trick Room, I just imprison your Trick Room, use my Dark Reduce Berry, which is, like, clean here, and then I win the game. Just easy peasy win the game. Actually, I'm going to Armor Cannon here into your King Game Beat. Yeah, so we're just going to imprison. And, yeah, I think Armor Cannon is the right play. I love that you PP Max your moves that have low PP usage as well. So, like, PP Max is Armor Cannon. Absolutely amazing. They can go Water Terra but I don't think it matters. They're trying to get that big trick room up, and I don't really care that much. Are you gonna, like, be fast Orin Guru taunt me? And so, and then next turn trick room, that'd be actually kind of sick. Orin Guru is very underrated. Very, very underrated mon, in my opinion. All right. So now we can do basically whatever we want here. Might as well Hyper Voice just to stop things that are Sash. So if that King Gambit Sash here, this would double up into it. And we're also imprisoning the Sylveon's Hyper Voice as well. Such a good set. Double into the King Gambit slot. Let's see if they are of like a Water Terra or like a Dragon Terra. I think Dragon Terra is actually underrated on Steel types. I think it's very underrated because like Steel types are weak against like Corviknight, for example. Or I'll, I'll use Corviknight as an example. I think it's one of the only mons can actually Dragon Terra correctly um, because it loses its weakness to. Um, is he gonna try and suck a bunch of me, bro? Bro, there's a terrain. Anyways, you lose your resistance. You lose your weakness to Fire. You lose your weakness to Electric on Corviknight. It's so cool looking. I love the way that looks. Wow. That's so much not enough damage. They can totally try and go after the entity here. Um, we have the Dark Reduce Berry, so we should be able to eat it. Hyper Voice, good damage. That's enough to actually finish off the King Gambit next turn, I would say. Instruct. Ha, protect. <laughs> Bro, that's not how that works. <laughs> protect. Dude, you get the double. Then he goes for his actual attack here. They thought we are going to double tap. And there. Oh, he's going to this. Dude, he's going to this slot. That's actually totally, totally okay. Because I wanted to use the well-baked bro anyways. Alright, so we do have to do this correctly. Because, like, that was, like, an actual big part of our strategy. That Oranguru does have Instruct. And I think what we're going to do is just go for... I think Snarl plus Hyper Voice would be able enough to get the KO and King Gambit. And if they wanted to pivot in something, like, Snarl's really, really good. Let's do this. Yeah, that was a good play from our opponent. Good stuff. I'm surprised they didn't go after the entity. Like, I, I think most people in that situation go after the entity because they feel they need to get the trick room setter off the board or the imprison user off the board. You can totally protect. Are you going to weave in like a foul play into our entity to be able to get rid of my, uh, what is it? To get rid of my berry? That would, my dark berry? That'd be actually really, really smart. Let's see what they're using. Special attack drops. Not really that important. Hyper Voice going to do good chip. Get Orangu right almost within range of the Citrus if it's holding one. And foul play. There it is. Good play. Again, that's another good play from our opponent. Don't really do that much damage, but like, we're good. 
And I think we're actually fine to just keep, like, hyper-voicing here. It's good damage if they want to switch on, like, Hariyama or something, too. We don't need to do anything spectacular with the dash button. I know that, like, the whole way, like, body strat's really good. You don't suck a punch me, but bro, there's a terrain! There's a terrain, bro! It's still up! It's still there! Alright, this should be able to get the uh, King Gambit down. If for some reason we don't, it's not a big deal. But hopefully it goes down. Awesome. And so, they have a mixture of, like, Hariyama and Torkoal in the back. We can snarl the Torkoal. Hyper Voice does good damage to Torkoal. They already used their Terra. Um, we have the well-baked body, so, like, it's not even that like, they can really do anything to us. Foul Point of that slot's not going to be doing a lot. We're actually going to try and stay Fairy as long as possible on our Dash Bun, just so we take uh, resisted damage from the Foul Point if we have to take it. Sylveon comes out. They are, the Hyper Voice is still in prison, bro. Bro, it's still, it's still in prison. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. And we just go for Snarls here. And it looks like no citrus on Orange Roo. Bro, what are you going to do? Yawn? Protect? Instruct protect again? That's funny. And we have S Scizor so good here. This is the last turn of the Psychic Terrain, I think. Or maybe one more. And the Scizor just comes out and goes bullet punch, bullet punch. Everyone gets everyone gets rocked here. And we still have the Water Terra for Scizor um, if we want to hit the Torkoal. So very, we're in such a good spot here. We just need to play it kind of patiently. The, right now they're trying to click it, dude. They're, they're like... They're like eh. It won't let me click Hyper Voice. I don't know why. I can't click. They're like, the game's bugged. It's rigged. <laughs> awesome. Really, really important to hit that on the Sylvie on there. Um, just get that special attack drop in case they are some sort of like throat spray set. Like, Sylvie is obviously a big special attacker. Just hyper Voice out. Good stuff. Orin, you got the Pinch Berry back there? Terra Blast. Okay. Raw Terra Blast. Pixelate boosted. Good damage. Good damage. Not good enough because of that Snarl, but like, still good damage. Instruct double dip in it. If they get the Entity off the board, we're going to be a little bit pressured, but not as pressured as you might think. Good play, though. Good play. We still hold on. So this is a whole other turn that they cannot use Trick Room. I love it. So in this case scenario, same play, same thing. Hyper Voice and uh, El Snarl. Don't even have to body press. This is totally not how you're supposed to play this team, but this is the tempo that you can play it against these, like, hard Trick Room teams. Like, I'm not even forced to have to, like, Weave and Bax Caliber, go for anything spectacular. I think a lot of people think, hey, good play right there. Love that. They still couldn't click Trick Room here, um, but yeah, good play from our opponent in that turn. Quick attack's great. Um, hit the Snarl, should be able to almost kill the Orangaroo. Next turn, Orangaroo does go down. So that's good to know. And let's actually think. They're probably just going for Instruct, right? Or like Foul Play? Yeah. Nothing I could have done about that. We actually wanted the terrain to go down too, so like I didn't want to switch out and bring in like Entity or something. We did the right play though. And so now they technically can go for Trick Room. Finally, after all these years, the power of Trick Room. Come with the Scizor. We're actually going to Terra in case they do have... I think Sylvan still gets Mystical Fire, so we will Terra. And we're just going to take the Orange Guru out actually, because we don't have to care about that Sylveon. I don't think there's a problem with just Snarling still, in case they want to pivot in a Torkoal or something. So they're probably just going to go Protect Sylveon, and they're probably going to go Protect Sylveon and Trick Room. That's what I would do in this situation if I were them. And remember, they, since they already Terra'd, I guess they would be Fire Terra. I don't know if Sylveon still gets high, uh, Mystical Fire. There's the Pivot. Okay. Okay. Hariyama. Great. So good play from them, like, pivoting in that situation. Because it makes it so their Sylvan doesn't have that, like, minus three special attack that it had. And then they can fake out one Mon next turn. They can fake out one Mon. It's going to be Scizor that they're going to try and fake out, I think. But I think we're going to be good here. So that guy goes down. Definitely right play to get that thing off the board, I would say. And then he's going to get burned here. I think that the right play in this situation is actually just charm the Hariyama. And if this is, a, we were talking about protect earlier on Scizor. I think Scizor, if it had protect here, would be a, this would be a great turn to drop a protect with the Scizor. This would be an absolutely amazing turn to do that. We can't. Um, so we're just going to go for the bullet punch into the Sylveon slot and a charm. This way, if they want to try and weave in, like, protect, and have a Scizor get messed up by the Hariyama, they're going to get charmed. So we're in a good spot. They should be fake outing Scizor, though. They should 100% be fake outing Scizor. I can't do anything about that. This Hyper Voice is going to really, really hurt. 
but we shouldn't get KO'd by it. And I think the right play for the whole late game situ situation is to soak this Hyper Voice here. Get our Citrus Berry active. A crit there might have almost KO'd. I still think this is a smarter play than going for a Snarl, by the way. Um, and next turn, we can go for the Bullet Punch into the Sylveon. But basically, what we're going to be doing is getting a second... We're going to get a second charm into the Hari. I'm going to make it so even if they go protect Sylveon here and try and weave in something different, they won't be able to get any KOs with it. That's the idea we're looking for. We're sealing up the Sylveon and just completely neutering the uh, Hariyama slot. Yeah. Yep. Protect. You need to go protect, like, close combat. What I would probably do if I had it, but like I don't know if that Sylvan has it. They've shown Terra Blast, they've shown Hyper Voice, they have Throat Spray. I don't know if they have a. They've shown Quick Attack. I don't think they have Protect on that set. It does have Protect. Wow. Which means I'm still doing the right play. Like we're still doing our very best to keep our Scizor out of range in these situations. So good stuff. Hopefully we're not within range of Quick Attack though from the Sylveon. That would really suck. Let's see what they go after. Knock off. We already lost our item. Yeah. Cool. We're good to go. Quick attack from Sylvan wouldn't do anything in this situation. And we should still be outspeeding Sylvan anyway, so our bullet punch would still go first. Now that Hariyama is, like, that weak, we can actually go into, like, just a little bit more damage on Sylveon if we need it. So we're going to go bullet punch in that slot. All this could have been mitigated by the Super Protect on Scissor, by the way. And, um, I don't think we need a Snarl at this point. We're going to go Body Press. Yes, it's not very effective for Sylvan, but it's a little bit of damage in case Sylvan gets left, like, one. Because our Scissor is not full attack investment. So Bullet Punch is going to do a lot, but we might need just a little bit more. Let's go for it. Okay. And anyways, like if we KO the Sylvan, who's protected on the cooldown, which means we knew that was a safe target, this gets redirected into the Hariyama. They're already at minus four. Like, we can just start doing whatever we want. Like, eventually that Hariyama is just going to get grinded on. Shouldn't even get the KO. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Value of Charm. Dash Boon. Dash Boon Value. Again, it probably, this game probably looks a lot closer than it really was, but they didn't really have options to play, like, the late game versus Dash Boon. Scissor's really, really safe. I wish we had Protect. This is where, like, Protect Scissor would have been very, very nice. I always tell you guys, like, see the value of Protect, utilize Protect, and, uh, yeah, we'll take these. Should be able to get the win in a couple turns. And, uh, we take those all the way to the bank. We used a lot of Dash Boon. That's the thing. I wanted to use Dash Boon this game, so I'm happy we used it. We're going to go in the team fixing portion of this right now. So if you want to see me take a look at all the EVs, take a look at all the type charts and see how we can fix the team and then play it in a few more games, that's what we're going to work on now. All right, so let's look at the EVs and let's fix this team from the ground up. One thing I really want to say is that I really like all of the Terra choices here for the most part. Ground Terra Bax Caliber is cool. Water Terra Scissor is cool. Steel, Steel Terra Dosh one's cool. Grass Terra Armors is cool. And I actually am a fan of the Fairy Terra Indity. It makes it so, yes, the Culver Berry happens and you can block a Dark Attack once, but if they want to double up a new next turn, you can actually still block it by going Fairy Terra. I thought about doing that in the last game, and that's actually a really, really cool tech. I like it a lot. I was thinking about saying you could go something else, but I like it. Keep it. Good tech. The Abomasnow, I don't think needs to be Grass Terra. I think Abomasnow actually does definitely benefit from being Ghost. So what we're going to do now is just take a look at, um, you know, the team right here. I think the big change in Abomasnow is making it Ghost. And there's two reasons to be Ghost. First of all, you avoid those fake outs and you don't have to use Indity as often. So you compare like Abomasnow and like, you know, something else. You know, it can be Scizor, so you can pivot or you can be Armors or basically anything you want. And the, a lot of times, a lot of the things people like to pair with um, their fake out users are big dragons like Hydragons, uh, even things like Gold English, which you can Earth Power or Guard Chomps and things like that, even Murkrows for that matter, or Tailwind Setters. And they want to fake out your Bomb of Snow because then the Bomb of Snow gets to go for two attacks. Basically, a Blizzard hits both. And so just going Ghost Terror, you can avoid that, get the big damage you need, and basically just steamroll the rest of the game from there. The second reason is like Extreme Speed Choice Band mods like Arcanine and Dragonite. So being able to wall those in the late game, just adding some type of mod that can be Ghost is really good. And the last thing is Parish Trap teams. Being able to tear a Ghost and then switch out basically just derails all of how Parish Trap works. If you compare that with um, the U-turn that you also have on Scizor, you're just going to be in a great spot. So Terra Ghost here, I would definitely use this. It's very, it's not that much of a change, but it, like I just said, it gives you wins in like four matchups that you didn't know you already had. So I like the set too. Love seeing the Giga Drain on a Focus Sash set so you can retap that if you come in and take a little bit of damage. 
Um, Indity, this is where I think like you can make some slight alterations to this set. Indities, I will say, at least need to have 12 points so you can outspeed other Indities and imprison them because everyone's using the same Indity set, right? Everyone's using an Indity that looks kind of like this. Maybe they have some points in Spadef or something or Special Attack, but you need to imprison them if you actually fight against them too so they can't hit you with Hyper Voices and they can't use their redirections and stuff. So I would say put about 12. I realistically would put 28 here because the speed creeps it by about three tiers, so four... 12 20 28 um and you know you can just take some points out of basically any stat that you wish um you do want to just yeah that looks fine and what i would actually do here is i would actually cut this up and go 220 here and go with like a 4 4 spread here just because uh basically one point in special attack and one point in special defense because it's uh splitting up the eight into four are worth more than just one point to defense. So two points are more than one. Split it up just a little bit. You still want to max out that HP. This is just slightly more optimal. And also with Indity, you definitely do want to get past the 107 threshold here because this lets you outspeed Dragapults. And you may think that's not that big of a deal because you can't hit Dragapult, but if they tear away their Ghost type, you can hit them with Hyper Voice when you're in a Tailwind. This is going to double to be one, or sorry, 218, which is faster than Dragapult's 213 speed if you have Tailwind from your Scizor. So if you ever have Tailwind setters, you definitely need to get your entities past 107. See, 105 here, that'd do 110. Dragapult's 113 doesn't work. So little rule of thumb, if you're right around that level and you have Tailwind, try and go past 107. Armor Rouge. I think this guy can be like slightly optimized. I think you definitely still want this, but if you're going to be using a Scarf set, the number that you need to get to, I don't think you actually need to get that high. So we're going to take a look at this guy in the damage calculator here and just plug in an Armor Rouge. And remember, uh, if I can spell, <laughs> Armor Rouge. Uh, it gets set to level 50. And the thing we're going to be taking a look at is the speed stat. So we are right now we have 252 with a Choice Scarf. And you think about yourself, like, what do we need to outspeed? There's some, there's some value being like full speed, yes, but like, what do we outspeed? Because like I said, like that doesn't even outspeed Pult. Like it doesn't even outspeed Pult. We take Pult for example here. I think you need to be like um, base 85 or in the 80 to actually outspeed Pult at plus one. Um, but like you take a Pult here, set it to level 50, give it like 252 and make it jolly. Um, it's 213 like I was talking about earlier. So this doesn't even outspeed Pult. So like what does this outspeed? We can go take a look at the actual team here. Um, just sort this by speed, like all the Pokemon in the meta. So we're not going to outspeed Electro. We're not going to outspeed Pult. We're not going to outspeed Barrascuta either. These guys aren't legal in this format. But we do outspeed, we can we can outspeed things like Jolteon. We can outspeed things like Talonflame. We can outspeed things like Kilowatt, Weavile, and by proxy, everything is slower than them too. So what we want to do is outspeed, I would say, Jolteon. Jolteon's actually not that uncommon of a pick. After San Diego Regionals, which is the question of the day, I'm recording this like a day before, you're going to start to see just a little bit more Jolteon. Uh, I'll keep that I'll keep that a little bit of a secret for now. Jolteon's a good Pokemon in this format for a few reasons. So we want to outspeed Jolteon, um, just because it has a good speed tier. And Jolteon, for those guys who don't know, is a 130 base speed. And that 130 base speed at level 50 turns into the number 200 if we make it like a full speed investment set. So we need to outspeed that. So that means realistically we can take just a little bit out. And we want to go just to 201, so 212. 212 is the number that we need if we want to still be timid. Is it possible to hit that without having our nature? What's the exact number that we're looking at here? It's 134. No, so we still need to be timid. And that number is 212. So this lets us outspeed Jolteon and by proxy everything else slower than that. And it doesn't let us have to go full, full, full speed like that. We have these extra 40 points to do basically whatever we want with. And since like we have good Bedef and defense, I realistically would just throw a mixture of that up here. So instead of going 44 in here, remember what we were talking about with the entity, we split those last eight up, take eight out of here, go down to a 36 and go with a 4-4 spread. So is this a humongous change? No, your moveset's still the same. Um, we're just basically functioning at the same speed tier and functioning with just a little bit more bulk than we had before. So people that are going to be trying to calc for how to KO these full sweeper Scarf Armor Rouges, like... They might miss their they might miss their damage rolls because we have a little bit more bulk than we normally should. Good thing to see. So Bax Caliber, very very similar. Let's take a look at Bax Caliber here. He has a lot more speed. This can definitely outspeed Pult, which is probably what the uh, calc is. I just want to want I want to find out. So remember, Pult was let's plug Dragapult over here, and Dragapult's definitely worth outspeeding because um, like Dragapult can totally check us. Uh, so I would definitely say outspeed Pult with this. And again. 142, man. Pult is such a speed creep, man. It's so, it's so fast. And you go Jolly or uh, Timid on these Pults, but it doesn't really matter. It's the 213. So our set is 180. Uh, it's 180 
jolly. And that outspeeds at plus one into outspeeding pulp by one point. So it just shows that this team is made correctly. That's the correct amount of speed to have. The only thing that I would change on this is, again, we talked about this, cut up that last eight. One point in HP is not as valuable as one point in each respective defense. Two points are more than one. Hopefully this teach you guys, this teaches everyone that. It's just a little bit more value. This guy's a big bloated HP stat too, so we don't actually need to have that much HP. So it's just a little bit better. I like that you already have the right EVs. I like the move set. I like the tech. Mon's good. Dash boom. I don't know what exactly you're outspeeding here. 95 is a common speed tier, so maybe you're trying to outspeed Arcanine. Speed creep just a little bit. Good EV spread. I think Dash Bun's actually made really, really well. Liked everything about this Pokemon. It was great. Scizor, though. I, I really wish that we had room for Protect. I really wish we had room for Clear Amulet. I wish that we had room for a lot of other stuff. I like the Scizor spread, though. Again, speed creeping, speed by just a little bit. Good stuff. Good Terra here. I don't understand exactly what these 44 are. I wish there was an explanation. Maybe you can leave one in the comments saying like exactly what these are. If these are just placeholders, that's fine. Um, and I think in that situation, I would probably be taking a little bit of attack and putting a little bit more in a respective defense to live with something combined with a, a citrus berry for a double up. But I like what the scissor brings to the table. It brings that U-turn, lets us pivot and set the weather at our own terms. Terra Blast for Terra Water is nice. Tailwind is nice. Bullet Punch, Great Revenge KO. The scissor seems fine on paper. I don't really see a problem with it. And like... You know, I nitpicked things on almost every single one of these Pokemon or talked about like things that could be changed. The fact that Scizor doesn't have anything standing out like that means it's just a good set. So I think this is a good team. I think the slight change we made just optimize EVs. If you want to change this item to something, you can because you still have the Fairy Terra there. I usually like the Psychic Seeds, but I realized through playing this team, it's one of the values of actually playing and testing it. I'm switching it out a lot. But other good items here are things like Rocky Helmets. I think Rocky Helmets is actually a pretty underrated item in this format. So maybe just think about that. But yeah, that's basically it. What we're going to do is go play some games on Showdown and see if any of the changes I actually made come into play. And uh, yeah, hopefully we win some more. Let's hop right into it. Oh my gosh, it's Trick Room. And this is Sneasel. Sneasel's is actually not, not a terrible Pokemon. It gets inner focus, which is why someone would use a Sneasel over a Weavile. Cool Pokemon. So this is where something like Abomasnow could totally go for Ghost Terra to stop those fake outs. Uh, we're just going to imprison. Imprison the trick him up. And I think we're just going to open up imprison. And I think I'm just going to go big with Bax Caliber. Because, like, we just want to pop that, pop that, pop that. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, Scizor is also okay here. U turn's great there. U turn's great there. Scizor can come in the back. I don't think we need the Obama Snow. I think, I think Armor Rouge is a great mod to just bring out to reapply, like, a win condition. Like, we still have um, Bax Caliber to be able to pair with. We can just go for Expanding Forces or Lava Plumes and just get great damage here. So I'll go with these. I've not really seen anyone use Gumshoes. Um, it's slow, so it can technically work in TR. Um, same thing, Bruxish is also like not a terrible mon. It has a relatively similar ability and uh, dazzling to the uh, Frog Giraffe's uh, Armor Tail, so you can't use priority moves on them. So good stuff. And the Entity, our Psychic Train, makes it so that Sneasel can't go for like a fake out and it was to stop our Imprison. So the only thing they actually have to stop our Imprison is a fast Taunt from maybe Glalie. Does that even get Taunt? Let's check. We're waiting. This is the value of playing on Showdown. Stupid not Battle Spirit Annihilate from earlier. Um, Glalie. Glalie's also not a bad Pokemon. I think it gets Taunt. Because, like, Frost House gets Taunt. So, yeah. Another thing about, like, we're talking about what to do with this Entity here. Thinking about our item choices. We might want to think about using Mentor of Entity to stop fast Taunts. So, like, I know personally when I've talked about me using Trick Room on, what I like to do is put uh, Taunt on my faster mons that are paired so like i usually like to use taunt mouse hold so i can taunt their imprison users so i can still get up my trick room that's one thing that i like to do so maybe just think about that if you're actually if i'd say if you get taunted when you're going for the imprison play more than twice just do it because like the the culver bear is really cool and it did help in one of our games but it's not something that's actually required yeah i don't know what this guy's waiting for but um i think we should be able to get this one relatively easy i think there's a lot of underrated mons on their team i think like klefki for example is a very very cool mon I'd, I'd, and like sneasel again if, if i was a new player i would not understand how to deal with these things but i've been around the block i've seen all these at the highest level and i don't think there's anything this team can really do to pull a fast one on me also they don't even really want to go glaily glaily the way that the thing usually gets played is like moody boosts and then like sheer colds and stuff like that it's like an evasiveness not even an evasiveness boost you just get rng boosts and then just roll people with sheer cold. And you can't really sheer cold, you can't sheer cold other ice types, just like you can't use fish around flying types. So 
Um, Glalie doesn't really have a role here, and Glalie's like I was talking about, their only win condition that would put them even like the slightest shot to have a shot at winning this game. So I probably shouldn't even include this, but I'm gonna include it because we talked about how to like deal with certain threats. Oh, they're, they're playing. I was like, I, I was. Anyways, let's go into it. So they want a trick room with this, I think. I think that might be a belly drum set. I don't actually care. Um, we're just going to go in prison on the trick room here. And I think we're just going to go with an icicle spear into that slot. Let's see what they do. I forgot to give a GOHF. One of my, I'm a terrible person. You guys should always say GOHF at the start of every game. It's, it's not hard to have good sportsmanship. It's actually really, really easy. It's really, really easy to have good sportsmanship. And it, it goes a long way, I would say. Take it from someone who hasn't always had amazing sportsmanship in the past. Um, I've definitely been a salty guy a few times in my life. And I know the value there. So we're just going to get the guy off the board. Maybe a citrus here. No citrus. Pinch. Oh, we only got the four hit. Unlucky. Unlucky. And Icy Wind instead. Crunch. It's Cobra Berry. So like, you see, yes and no. There's good and bad things. It's Life Orb. Cobra Berry with a strong job boost. That's a strong job boosted like crunch that's a that's a weak pokemon <laughs> yeah uh i think in this situation we already know that we still outspeed that guy so we're just gonna hyper voice to get it off the board and against brux just there's not that much that we actually have i'm gonna dragon dance to be able to regain my speed tier and then maybe lose the entity and then bring out something like armor energy ball to blow that thing up psychic things is fine dd baby we already still know that we outspeed there so good damage break special sash on the brux dish too and now we're back to a plus one and they just scoop. So easy peasy. That game was not like a hard one at all. I don't know what this is, but uh, let's go to another game and see if we can fight a harder opponent. Okay, really, really good team. I think Garchomp, Hydreigon, Murkrow, really, really good. Redirection from Amoongus with a little bit of Trick Room Core on the Envy. Good stuff. I don't think there's a problem with this. This is where I think a Bombastoke can be good. It's good versus Garchomp. It's good versus Hydreigon. It's good versus Murkrow and Amoongus. So it's a good Mon, in my opinion, here. I think I can also realistically bring back Caliber. I think those are both solid options. So we can just Terra away. Like if you want to lead one, people like to think that Murkrow is too oppressive. If you were to lead like Murkrow Garchomp, Murkrow Hydreigon, well, you have to Tailwind. And then if I double into your Garchomp, even if you protect, like Murkrow is basically not doing anything. People aren't running their most offensive Murkrow sets right now. So you can just go into that Garchomp for days and like probably be fine. I think we're going to also bring our Entity here. And I know there's an Entity over there. I think we're going to bring Scizor in the back in case we need it. I think Armourge is also okay, but like I think Scissor is just a little bit safer. Because like if things get away from me and I have to trade Tailwinds, I can with Scizor. So I think it's a good idea. Let's see what they're going to do with Torkoal. If they lead Torkoal and I lead Obama Snow, they take away my Hail right from the start. But I don't think that's that big of a deal. I'm not that afraid of Torkoal with this team. Again, you got to always give your GLHFs. Always give those GLHFs up. There we go. Garchomp and Merkur, right? That's exactly what we said. So we can do a couple things here. Um, we can go ground Terra and just get the Garchomp off the board and pop Blizzard, or we can even go protect here, pivot in the NDD, and just, like, do whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. This lets us bait their Terra, too. I think a lot of people, they overcommit and they go too aggressive. The cool thing about this is we actually still get the, uh, we get the boost right now from our Snow. Right, we get the defense boost of both these mons. I want to see if they're using rock slides. I want to see if they're using earthquakes. They're probably not swords dancing. They're protecting tailwinding. And the cool thing about this is if they had some sort of quash play or taunt play, you see how like ahead we are? Yes, they haven't set tailwind, but like now, what are you going to do? You're going to use dragon claw? Like I have follow me, right? And I can just go for the icicle spear in your Garchomp slot. You can tear it away. Um, you can do a lot of things, but like, I don't think I'm not afraid. I actually even think that I could dragon dance here. But I don't want to Dragon Dance. Um, we're just going to go follow me and Ice Ghost. The reason why I don't want to Dragon Dance is because I don't want them to get my Entity off the board somehow. And then just like one shot me with Foul Play. So I think this is a good spot. I was trying to bait their Terra too. They actually did a good play by not Terrorizing, I think. There's the Entity. Cool. Ground Terra, they're still gone, buddy. SD, dude. Not not today, buddy. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Nope. Dopers. They thought I was going to... The reason why they did that, I want to let you know... There's already a Psychic Terrain, but I think they swapped in to set Terrain to protect themselves from Ice Shard. And I want to talk also a little bit about how the fact I saved my Obama Snow in the back. It wasn't exactly for this situation, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to still click Hyper Voice. Um, we could even protect and imprison to stop following. We actually really like that. Remember how we changed our Entity set? Yep, we're going to protect and imprison. 
drop the protect, and then next turn we're going to ground terror. I just KO the Torkoal. Eruption shouldn't get the KO. Nope. Yep. Awesome. And we sealed that trick room. Easy peasy. So even if they wanted to go for like a hyper voice something to get some KO, it wouldn't work. So now we can just go hyper voice back. We can trust Ice Ground. Yes, they have a Murkrow, but like their board is really, really low power. Cool. Great stuff. They already wasted a terror. Do you see like the slight, slight changes that we made? Just the, just the slightest changes that we made coming into play here. And they're like, what? I can't click follow me. What? I can't click trick room. That entity probably is going to be struggling. <laughs> no, it's not. It, it might have like protect. It has some move. Oh, we crit the Torkoal Valley. We didn't need it, but like, I want to see the, uh, the Psychic. Okay, good. Psychic's a good play there. And now we can just go follow me. Yeah, they got, they take the L. So they're going to have to send out the Murkrow. We're going to click follow me, take out Murkrow, and then take out the Entity. So good, good, good stuff. I like this team a lot more after the small changes we made. And uh, yeah, I, I really just think that it's so cool that like I can just spend every single day critiquing all the amazing teams you guys submit on Patreon. There's going to be a brand new submission post going up at the start of the week of... I think like the 6th or the 7th. So the, yeah, the 9th. So the week of the 9th, there's going to be a brand new team submission post. So if you guys have teams you want to send me, think about checking out the Patreon. Even the lowest tier can send teams. I fix as many as I can. You know, I do a YouTube video every single day on these things. And it's it's a lot of fun. I get to see how other people play the game. I like to put my own spin on it. And I actually think the changes that I make help people. I would say one last time on this team's rental code. It's going to be right here. You can totally add this team's rental code. Like we didn't make that many changes. We optimized a couple of the EV spreads. And uh, other than that, this team was great, guys. Think about watching San Diego Regionals. There's going to be a stream somewhere on Twitch. You can find it on Twitter. You can find it somewhere. I don't normally watch Regionals, but I think if this is your first time getting into competitive Pokemon, you should definitely check out what a Regional stream looks like. It's going to be a lot of fun. I will say I'm recording this on the 3rd, and I might even be there. So you might even just see me on the Regional stream. Who knows? Who knows? There's still one last chance to get tickets that goes up a little bit later today. And if you guys see me, that's cool. And if you don't see me, well, you guys can watch on YouTube. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And other than that, peace out. And I'll see you guys next time.